Thunderdome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. <clears throat> Alright, uh, Kell Brook. I'm going to talk about Kell Brook and the welterweight division. Uh, in my opinion, Kell Brook has the best chance. Or is basically, I consider him like my favorite. Uh, not like my favorite fighter, but my the, the guy I would favor to be the future of the welterweight division for however long he decides to stay there. Um, after his last fight with Bizier, you know, he um, said that he wants to stay at welterweight, unify the division, become the undisputed champion, <clears throat> at least try, you know. Um, then after, you know, however long that takes, or if he fails or whatever, he said then, eventually, and that's how he put it, eventually, move up. And that move up isn't to, like, Golovkin. Um, you know, that was strictly, I mean, he said Golovkin because, hey, no one wants to fight him, I'll fight him and all that. He had a fight coming up. You know, he wanted to get his name in the headlines. Um, same thing with the Mayweather uh, thing, really, which I'll get to, because uh, that's very easy to explain. But, no, he'll move up to 154. Um do his thing there. Maybe have a mega fight uh, with somebody like a Golovkin if he ends up doing something at 54 also. Um, and, you know, it makes sense in the, down the road. We have no clue. Um, but the reason, uh, well, reasons really, that Brooke is the guy I favor um, to take over, you know, or has the best chance of taking over the welterweight division. And I would say the number two guy would be Keith Thurman. Uh, he has, those two probably have the most amount of ability. Um, but I want to stick with Brooke uh, for right now. Because, you know, I'm knowing where Brooke stands. Uh, after Thurman Porter, we will all have a much better read on Keith Thurman. <laughs> and Sean Porter, obviously. <clears throat> And that could be Sean Porter's ticket to his rematch with Kell Brook. But, actually, before I get to the why I, I think Kell Brook has the best chance of becoming like the king in the future, you know, in a year or so, the top dog, uh, his call out of Floyd Mayweather. Um, yeah, I'd like to see that fight. I would. Uh, but that fight should have happened instead of Berto. And it should have happened for all four titles. You know, Floyd had, a, he did have a large um, sanctioning fee to keep the WBO title. But it was literally one, like, le it was less than 1% of his purse to keep the WBO title. Then he, he should have went after Brooke um, and tried to become undisputed champion. I mean, I remember doing a top five guys who Floyd should fight and top five guys that Manny should fight if whoever won. And Brooke was number one for both of them just because, you know, come on, you become undisputed. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen, and that's when it should have happened. And that ship has sailed. You know, Brooke ain't getting that Mayweather fight. Um, no way, shape, or form. Is Floyd Mayweather going to fight him? Um, he's just not. You know, it's uh, it's way too dangerous of a fight. Uh, but he's looking at the typical opponents. You know, Garcia or Alberto. Or not Alberto, Broner. You know, guys like that. He ain't coming back versus anyone, you know, in their prime. Uh, got size, you know, not a size advantage, but got size equal, you know, frame structure, weight, everything. Um you know, top level guys, um, or he would have did it instead of Berto. So that ship has sailed. I'm sorry, Brooke. Maybe you know you know that too, and you're just kind of putting it out there again to gain more headlines um, post fight, as the GGG headlines gave you pre fight. You know, versus Bizier. Um, <clears throat> no, yeah, Bizier was just a, a, a Mando, which you know a lot of people think he's like cherry picking these guys. You know, he was supposed to fight Chavez and injured his ribs. Um, so that fight unfortunately was postponed 
and then IBF had a date where the, he had to fight his Mando by a certain date, so, so he had to fight Vizier. He didn't want that fight at all. He said it numerous times, and that's why he went in there and literally brutalized the guy. Um, got him out of there in, what, two rounds? Um, and I swear, like, I, I'm sure I'm exaggerating, but, I, I mean, if you watch the fight, it's like he fucking landed 80% of his power punches. Like, he just brutalized that dude. And, yeah, he's uh, not a world beater at all, uh, busy, but, you know, he's a solid, you know, C-plus fighter, like, prime C-plus type fighter, I guess. I mean, he treated him like a, you know, he should treat a C-plus level fighter if you're an A-level fighter. Right, um, you brutalize them and get them the hell out of there. You know they don't touch you. You land everything you throw and get them out of there early. It's, it's, he did what he was supposed to do. Um, but I'm calling out Mayweather. Nah, like I said, the ship sailed. It should have happened last year. It didn't. It's never going to. Um, you know, if Floyd want, <clears throat> wants to take on. <clears throat> uh, tougher opponent than a, a Broner or a Danny Garcia type, it would be a Pacquiao rematch. And it probably won't be his fit for his 50th fight either. It would probably be like his 51st. Um, you know, because we'll have to see what happens with Pacquiao after this Bradley fight and how he looks in the Bradley fight. Um, you know, there's so many things going on there. But if Pacquiao looks really good and... If he was somehow able to just, you know, look fantastic and dominate Bradley, I think Floyd would be cr absolutely crazy to leave that kind of money on the table. Because let's face it, he got 60-40 in the first fight, made 200 mil. It's not going to generate the same kind of money. We all know that. But he'll still he'll get the, a bigger split this time. He'd probably make 100 mil. You know, I mean, you'd be absolutely crazy to, to fight Garcia for, like, 20 million. Because um, he don't have no 30 mil guarantee again, and he ain't getting it either. They're not going to risk loot on a one, especially if he signs, like, a one-fight deal or something with, with Showtime, just to have a one-time one, one time fight, you know. They'll guarantee him a little money and really hit him on the back end, depending on what the pay-per-view sales do. Um I don't think he'd earn thirty million fighting a Garcia or a Broner. Even though I know like a Broner fight, especially with all the trash talk, would um, be hyped up very well. But I don't think anyone would really buy it. You know, a lot of people might stream it uh, just to see it, but I don't think they're gonna waste their money on someone a fight that they know who's gonna win, like a hundred percent know who's gonna win. And the same goes for Danny Garcia. So you know, I don't know, but. You know, if Pacquiao looks, you know, a bit dangerous and back in great shape, I don't know if he would even take it. Maybe he would. Uh, the money, I think he'd be absolutely crazy not to. So he has too many options outside of Brooke. But Brooke got the, the new guys to worry about, you know. Um, he shouldn't even really be worrying about Floyd. Of course, of course he'd love that fight, but as everyone would. But, you know, the, he has a lot of other guys. You know, the, the, the Bradleys and the Porters and Khan uh, still, um, you know, Spence, um, Danny Garcia, Thurman, you know, etc. But Brooks' power, you know, it's not, you know, like pound for pound elite type power, but it is big power, solid power, um, will keep you way more than honest. And, you know, if he clips anyone, any welterweight with a, a, a nice, nice shot on the button, oh, they're going to be hurt and bad. And, you know, his accuracy is... His accuracy is very underrated by a lot of people, I think. I don't think they realize how accurate these guys' punches are. And that's why a lot of times they'll be so effective. Um, he has defense. The guy knows how to defend himself. You know, not talking with just offense, even playing defense. So a guy against, like, say he was up against a big puncher, like a, a Thurman or something, he's going to be able to defend himself. I mean, he's not um, as flat-footed as, like, a, or slow-footed, I should say, as, like, a Chavez, where, you know, 
Thurman was able to, to kind of set the distance where he wanted it. If he wanted to be on the inside, he could. If he wanted to be on the outside, he could. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have high hopes for Thurman, but I just don't know what level he's at. I don't, you know. Um, but I think that will be the 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 biggest challenge in the welterweight division for him out of the young guns. Bradley is another one that could happen. You know, Spence possibly, which I'll get to. But um, his combinations, Brooks combinations, you know, very accurate combinations, very, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, he, he doesn't throw wild combinations. He picks his shots and throws combinations perfectly. Like, if he's going to work off the jab and hit you with the straight right, you know, he's looking for the openings while the other shot's coming. So he's already, in, he's not just throwing, well, let me just throw one, two, three and see if something lands. No, he's picking his shots and his ring IQ and uh, not even ring IQ, but, you know, his fighting IQ. Like when he's throwing that two, he's seeing everything you're doing and looking for, okay, where's this shot going to land now? Should I throw it to the body? Should I throw it to the head? Where's the opening going to be? Or should I maybe throw it up top to keep him with his hands high, then bring the right back to the bottom? You know, he's very precise with his combinations um, and intelligent with his combinations. Uh, strength. The guy is strong as hell because, let's face it, he is a big welterweight. Um, you know, it looked like he had uh, looked like he was a little like gaunt at the weigh-in for Bizier. Uh, maybe he just didn't train as hard, but and took it easy and had to you know drain himself a little further down. Uh, but he said he has all intentions on staying at welterweight, so I don't think he's really having problems making 47. But he is a big welterweight, strong as shit. You know, um, I mean, you had. Porter charging him, bam, and he'd hold his ground. Yes, it was ugly, and he would clinch him and shit like that, which I hated. Um, you know, he, he hasn't been doing that lately. Now, granted, maybe it's just because he hasn't needed to, but I hope he doesn't do that shit in the future because uh, then I will start to like him less and less. But he got a good chin as well. So, I mean, even when these guys do connect on him, he takes it just fine, you know. Even good, pop, even guys who can crack pretty hard, um, like Porter. Porter landed flush on him several times. He took it perfect. You know, didn't even bother him. Um, you know, not that we saw signs like that it bothered him. Um, and his classical boxing style is a great style to have because you know it helps you. Um, it means you're very well rounded, and you can. You can perform, you know, well to great against any style, you know, whether it's a, an aggressive fighter, um, a guy fighting off his back foot, a guy trying to circle the ring and pot shot you, um, uh, a little speedy guy trying to just outpoint you. <clears throat> you know, it's it's a style that can be used against any style because it's so textbook, you know. Um, <clears throat> Similar to how Oscar De La Hoya's style was, but he's more of a... I'm not going to say he's a better fighter than De La Hoya, but he has a more complete style uh, in that form, and, you know, in that, in that you know, stance and form and all that, uh, because he got power on both hands, basically. You know, Oscar had limited power in his right hand. Um, Oscar had better footwork. You know, he, he was faster on his feet, I should say. Um, when he was up on his toes, but sometimes that would cause him to gas out, as we all know, you know. Um, Brooke don't waste any movement. Everything he does is for a reason, you know. There's no wasted movement. Um, that's why he got good stamina, you know. Um, no way. What the fuck? He, these scans are driving me crazy. I can't figure out how to turn them off. Um... He got good stamina just in general, but the way he fights, the guy could probably fight, you know, 15 rounders, like the, you know, hard 15 rounds. Um, 
he can box or bang, you know. He can pick you apart from the outside, or if you want to get rugged, he, you know, he can get rugged. Um, you know, some people like to say that Porter uh, charging in and diving in like that kind of made Brooke have to hold him. I don't buy that shit at all. Um, no, he was just grabbing. Um, he counter and grab. Uh, no, he definitely could have countered and sidestepped, countered and swooped under like a Manny Pacquiao or something. How many times he deal with guys charging him? He don't have to grab him, you know. Um, so hopefully Brooke cuts that out. Um, his uh, reflexes. Let's do, well, first of all, the reflexes all come in with the timing and, and you know the distance and controlling the range. Uh, his timing is great. You know, great. He has great timing, great accuracy. Um, and he's able to control the range just by taking the little mid steps and side steps because, you know, it, re it, re it really boils down to him being a, a well rounded fighter. You know, he's not really lacking in any area when other fighters are lacking in areas. Um,. Does that give him an edge? Yeah. Does it give him a big edge over the other guys? No. Because, um, you know, maybe they, they can do something better than he can in a certain area, which you could say, well, it kind of just evens itself out or it gives him just, it, in total, a very slight edge. But he got great offensive reflexes, great defensive reflexes, you know, great counter-punching reflexes. Um... Uh, I talked about his size. You know, he's an underrated counter puncher too. Um, you know, and 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 we've seen it with the, uh, you know, the Porter fight and other fights. But you know, I bring up Porter because you know he was the best fighter he fought, and he was countering all, all night long. But he would counter and then grab. Uh, he needs to learn to, you know, counter put his gloves up, get out of the area, swoop under, and then bang, bang again instead of clinching. Um, he does have ring IQ, and the ability, and the ability to, to, to study and figure out his opponents quickly, you know, like quickly. Um, take, take the busy A fight, for example. Uh, yeah, I know it's not the greatest opponent, but the first 15 seconds of the fight, he got touched up. You know, he didn't get hit with anything, like, major, but he did get, you know, some, some leather landed on his face. Uh, immediately, that leather quit landing. He found his range. He found the angles Bizier was punching from. Yeah, found the, the angles Bizier was punching from and just destroyed him. Just destroyed him. Um, <clears throat> now he figured that guy out and about, figured out the, the angles he's punching from. Figured out his range, his speed, um, all in about 20 seconds. Now, clearly he won't be able to do that with uh, top-level guys, but he'll be able to figure them out in a round or two, um, which is really what the elite fighters do. It takes them a couple rounds when you're an elite fighter fighting an elite fighter. So he's definitely an elite at understanding what his opponent brings and how they bring it, you know, um, whether it's their footwork, uh, the angles they punch from, uh, how fast they punch, so, uh, you know, how, how the timing, um, very quick. He's elite at that level. Um, you know, vicious body attack, man. I mean, he digs to the body, man, digs to the body. Uh, and his jab, his jab, you know, that whole one-two, uh, and especially, I really need to see him versus a top-level welterweight again, you know, because Porter, uh, that fight was so ugly. I need to see him versus, like, a, a Thurman. Um, I'd really love to see that fight. Um, if Brooke wins, I'd like to see that fight, too. Um, <clears throat> a Timothy Bradley, you know, some of these guys. Um you know, I, I, re I really want to see you know, how he works. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing that Porter rematch. I want to see if he can beat him again and do it cleanly, you know, without the excessive clinching. 
um, defensively responsible, man. You know, and that all comes back from the, the classical textbook boxing style, which, you know, he is really mastering as he's, you know, developing, because uh, it makes him offensively and defensively responsible. You know, it's never, he's never, you know, trying to be flashy and wild and getting out of position and, able, you know, putting himself in, in, in position to be countered or, um, you know, uh, hands down, you know, someone, someone with a, a, a fast straight right might be able to just clip him on the button type thing like Costa Zoo hat and, or Costa Zoo uh, Zab Judah, I mean, nothing like that. You ain't going to see that from him. Because he has a classical textbook style that keeps him defensively responsible as well as offensively responsible. And that's why it's going to be hard for anyone to beat him. You know, he throws he throws every punch to the head and the body at top level. Like, he, like it's like he opened up a boxing textbook and just fucking practiced since he was a little kid, which he did, really, you know. Um... And he's a hell of an athlete, very athletic. Um, so he could fight other ways, like flashy, if he wanted to. But that's just not his style. He, you know, perfected the textbook style, um, which has led many fighters to, you know, top become top level fighters. Um, his footwork, you know, the the. the which I really wish he would have showed more of in the Porter fight. Uh, you know, maybe I don't. I'm not even gonna make excuses for him, but I'm just. I'm not. And I'm not trying to. But I'm saying maybe he was nervous about the whole title shot being in the states. He didn't want to take any risks. He just figured if the ref's gonna keep letting me time up, I'm gonna time up and then start back over. Um, you know, but I think his confidence is much higher now than it was at that point. Um, and he's very good at taking away the jab of a fighter. Um, I don't care if they have a long jab, a short jab, power jab, quick jab. He is good at taking away the jab, which is textbook again, right? So these guys, they can't always come in behind the jab because they'll, they'll get smacked. You know, so it leads them to, to really almost not abandon it, but not use it as often as they should. And they'll come in instead, you know, behind straight rights and left hooks, which really uh, give him, you know, a, a more of an opportunity to see everything coming. Instead of having to worry about the jab, then a two sneaking behind it or a three coming off of it. No, he's just seeing the, the power shots coming first. So he's able to either block them, get out the way, or counter them. You know what I mean? Um, he can hit the angles. Um, he hits the pivots and the angles. You know, he's not like a Manny Pacquiao where he'll really hop right over and light, light you up, but he'll pivot. Then, then hit you and light you up. Um, his jab is a powerful jab. You know, not like a Triple G or Kovalev jab, but it is a powerful jab. Um, that alone can keep guys honest. Uh, like, very honest. So, you know, it's like he has, I think, anyway, from what we have seen from the new guys, you know, I'm talking about the, the Garcias and uh, Porters and Thurmans, uh, obviously Brooke, uh, Spence, uh, Vargas, Saddam Ali, Algeri. I mean, all the new guys, Lamont Peterson, all the, you know, up, up and coming welterweights in the top 20, basically. I think personally that he has more tools and ability or abilities than any other 147 pounder. Now Thurman uh, could have this Porter fight, and, and that could change my mind. You know, uh, maybe I, I just haven't seen Thurman um, really tested. And once he gets uh, sort of like how Triple G, when he got put in the ring with a you know top level guy, you saw you know uh, a different animal. 
could be the same thing with Thurman. We're going to have to find out. Um, and maybe he'll show us something that we're just like, whoa, you know, okay, no, no, no. Now I favor him over Brooke. But at the moment, I'm favor, I, I favor Brooke to beat Thurman. Uh, it'd be a close fight. I'm talking, you know, 55-45, type fight. Um, and, the, you know, depending on where it takes place, and that's another big thing. None of these American guys are going over there. He needs to realize that. Um, they're not going to. Maybe, you know, Bradley probably would. Thurman said he'd fly right over there, but then the question comes down to, okay, maybe you would, but how much money is it going to take to get you to go over there, you know? Uh, so, you know, I mean, we saw how it turned out when the Porter fight was trying to get made. We all know it's a fact that Thurman tried to get out of it, man. Um, and we know that Heyman basically forced him to take the Porter fight. So, you know, I mean, how much money would it take him to fight uh, Brooke in the UK? Porter, another one, I think, would go to the UK. He said it. I totally believe him. The guy's a warrior. Um, now, if Porter beats Thurman and gets that WBA belt, then maybe we'll see the unification fight happen in the UK. But if Thurman keeps it, he's going to have to come over here. For unification. Same thing for Jesse Vargas. He'll have to come over to the States. Um, Bradley, it's not a unification, but it's a big fight. Good name. If he fights Bradley, that one might be able to happen anywhere. Uh, depends what the, the best money would be like, I guess. Um, Garcia is never going over to the UK to fight Brooke. I don't even think he fucking fight Brooke in Barclays, honestly, I think, because I think he gets destroyed. Um, but like I was saying, I think he has more more tools and abilities than any other, you know, any of the 147 pounders. But out of the guys, I, I made a little list here uh, of dudes uh, that he should really fight or go after or whatever. Um, you know, Brooke, he's 36 and 0, but he called out Floyd Mayweather, Garcia, uh, uh, Thurman Porter winner, basically everybody. Um, I don't know if you said Pacquiao's name, but I'm sure you would love a Pacquiao fight. Uh, so basically, the, the I put the, the Pacquiao Bradley fight uh, at the top. I didn't even put Floyd on here because I really just don't think that fight will ever happen. Uh, but the Pacquiao Bradley winner, I think he he would want probably more than any other fight because that would get him if he beat the winner of that fight. Who the winner of that fight is the best welterweight in the world, hands down. You know, so if he could beat that guy, you know, that would probably make him the best welterweight in the world. You know, um, he's already the what third best, um, right behind Pacquiao and Bradley. So yeah, if he could beat the winner of that fight, uh, which I think he's gonna, he should, I think he better chase that fight and be willing to take it in the states. Uh, otherwise, it won't happen. You know. Now, will it even happen? Because we're hearing Al or not Al Hema, Bob Arum talk about Jesse Vargas fighting the winner. You know, Pacquiao, Canelo. I mean, you know, Bradley Vargas fight. <sighs> Bradley got destroyed for 12 rounds and 11 rounds, 2 minutes, and 45 seconds. You know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't need to see that fight again. Um, but hey, you know, if that's the fight that happens, it happens. Uh, Bradley would probably get the belt back. Then we could get, you know, a ballsy champion who would unify with anybody. Um, you know, but this is going to... This ain't going to be no year. He ain't going to do it in 2016. He probably won't even do it in 16 and 17. It might take him until 2018 to become, you know, undisputed if he can do it, first of all, like I'm saying. Um, it's an it's a if, he, but he obviously wants to try to do it, um, which I love hearing. You know, same goes for, like, James DeGale, Golovkin, and Kovalev. These guys want to try to do it. There's no guarantee any of them can do it, but they want to try uh, Loma, you know, wants to try to, um, you know, unify all the belts of a division. <clears throat> Can they? That's a whole other story. Um, you know, they might be the favorite 
you know, in all of the matchups, that don't mean the, they're going to win them all. Um, after the Pacquiao-Bradley winner, I would think the Thurman Porter winner. Because um, that would be, that might be the new uh, number three best. You know, it depends how Thurman performs. You know, if Thurman wins. Because if Brooke beats Thurman, I mean, if Porter beats Thurman, we don't know exactly if that's going to put him at number three since Brooke had already beat him. Now, they would have to, I think they should fight immediately if if Porter wins. Um, that'd be, you know, hell, put it in, put it wherever you want to put it in the States, put it in the UK, it doesn't matter. Unification fight, get it cracking wherever you can get the most money at. Um, so the Pac Brad winner first, Thurman Porter, um, Winner would be his, you know, second uh, best option. Um, after that, you know, it gets a little fuzzy on exactly who would be the guys, but um, clearly Con, Con uh, would be a good one. Uh, that'd be a big fight, um, obviously. Uh, especially if. Khan could somehow, you know, get the win over Canelo and then comes back down because he says he's only coming in at 165 versus uh, Canelo. So he'd easily be able to fight right back at welterweight because he's really only moving up one division and he's only putting on a few extra pounds. So he, he could easily fight at welterweight right after winning that belt, you know, win the middleweight title, vacate it, drop back down to welterweight. That's up to him what he wants to do, though. Maybe he wants to take on Golovkin. Um, but you got Errol Spence, who is, you know, working his way 19-0, uh, working his way up to that IBF Mando spot. I do not, I don't give a shit what he looks like versus Algieri. And, I, you know, it, I think that'll be a good fight. I mean, I, I've been saying long before that fight was Ever signed, you guys all know. I was saying that is the fight that he should take uh, because he's going to fight a live dog, someone coming to win who can take punishment, last, give you good work, but doesn't have the power to knock you out with one punch. Don't even have the power to knock you out. Period. Um, maybe he can outpoint you, but you better be able to outpoint him, and, or else you're just you know not your hype, you know, flat out. Um, but that's that's the fight I said he should take. Um, his next fights, if he does uh, well versus Algeria, you know, he should take on someone like a Lamont Peterson, you know, um, someone like a Felix Diaz, who, in my opinion, is undefeated. He's a two-time Olympian, um, so he got better amateur background than Errol Spence because he also won the gold in Beijing. Um, you know, in 08, so he has, he's a two-time Olympian, won gold in, in one of the years. I thought he beat Lamont Peterson. Um, it was a close fight, but I thought he beat Lamont Peterson. So maybe fight Lamont Peterson first, then Felix Diaz, or maybe just fight Felix Diaz, right? What the fuck? You know, hey, if you're supposed to be the next Floyd Mayweather, you should be able to handle Felix Diaz if he had a close fight with uh, Lamont Peterson. Now, I thought he won, but it was close. Um, you know, they gave the decision to Lamont Peterson, which I thought was fucked up, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, him and uh, Felix Diaz have right about the same amount of fights. I think Errol Spence might have one more fight than him, um, but that's a perfect matchup, you know, a uh, perfect matchup. Uh, I would love to see that fight. Um and still, even if he fights Lamont first or Lamont after, I'd still want to see him versus a guy like Lamont Peterson. Um, who else you got out there that would do good? Uh, Sammy Vasquez. I think Sammy's a bit small uh, for an Earl Spence, but I would still like to see that fight. It would give him a, a different look of opponent and a guy who is definitely going to come to win because he needs to far start, start far, he needs to start fighting. Uh, Guys who don't come to lose. Guys who don't come to just collect a paycheck. Guys who are there to whoop your ass and take the fight as serious as possible. And they should be given, you know, these guys, eight, ten-week camps, Spence as well, and hyping these fights up big time, right? 
Um, and that's what they need to do if they want Spence to be the, you know, the next big thing for Al Hanger. Um, which, uh, I need to see Spence versus some, I need to see Spence versus some upper echelon guys because I don't know if he is maybe, uh, taking some of these, uh, lower level guys lightly. And that's why they're lighting his ass up sometimes. Um, or if that's just the level of a level of fighter he is, I, I don't know, man. But, you know, when you saw, you know, guys like Floyd, guys like, uh, you know, De La Hoya and Sugar Shane Mosley and, you know, uh, you know, you, you saw Winky right mainly over in England, but, you know, all of the, you know, the Roy Jones, I mean, any of these guys, any top, top level guy where they're calling them blue chip prospects throughout the 90s, you know, when they fought, like, you know, journeyman, I mean, they fucking annihilated them and they didn't get touched up. And, and then, you know, especially the type of journeyman that Spence has been fighting, which are basically D-level fighters, they just blew those guys out in a few rounds and, like, didn't get touched up, like, with big, big punches, uh, especially, like, two pieces over and over again, you know, things like that. I don't know, maybe he's taking them lightly. Uh, it's possible, which he should never do. I don't care how, you know, much of a showcase fight it is. You should never take someone lightly, you know, but who else do I got? Um, I was talking about the Spence. Now, now, Spence, I do not think Spence should jump right, like, say if he fights Algeri and goes to fight Brooke next, I think he gets spanked. But get him in there with Algeri, then maybe uh, Lamont Peterson first. Or, yeah, I, w I would put him in with Lamont Peterson first, but maybe Felix Diaz first, too. Um, then a Lamont Peterson. Just get him in there with multiple tough guys that are coming to win. They're skillful. Um... You know, they, they can give him different looks. Uh, you know, just uh, he'll get a, a bunch of different things from these guys. I don't think he should jump from fighting complete nobodies to Chris Algieri, then shoot right to Brooke. I just don't see it. Now, if he wants it, fuck it. It's his career. Go for it. You know, let it blow up in your face all day if that's what, if that's what you want. Um, but if I was his manager, I'd be getting him some some live opponents first and as many as possible you know like if he fought uh lamont peterson and knocked him out in two rounds i'd have him in the ring three months later you know depending on how he performs that's how fast you get him right back in the ring um verse another good fight like a, a, a felix diaz or um a sammy vasquez or something like that you know then you got uh, well, Lamont Peterson, Sammy Vasquez, Algeria is obviously fighting. Um, you got Dmitry uh, Mikulenko coming up. Uh, you know, that'd be a good fight for him. You know, it'd definitely be a good fight for him. Tough son of a bitch. He's going to come to win. Um, Non-stop punching. He can take a punch. Uh, that'd be a good fight. You know, good fight. Um, Saddam Ali, you know, uh, that'd be a good fight. I think he, I think Spence would, you know, more than likely beat him. Uh, but again, you know, get some good rounds in, some good rounds in. Um, hmm, the winner of uh, Brad Solomon versus uh, Constantine Panamara. Now I know these guys. Neither one of them are in the top twenty, but uh, Panamara is twenty nine and zero. Brad Solomon's twenty six and zero. So the Neither one of them has really made a mark yet, but fighting each other, that's a damn good fight. I mean, those guys are equally matched, putting their O's on the line. They're going to give it their all. Whoever wins that fight, depending on how they win, I mean, clearly whoever wins is jumping up into the top 20. Um, depending on how they win, if they won very impressively, they could jump into the top 15. I mean, maybe that's a fight, um, a, a stay busy fight for for Brooke or a fight for Spence. Um, you know, because it looks like Spence is on that road to the Brooke fight for the mandatory, you know, so um, you know, that's a fight that you might want to look at to try and take uh, 
the winner of. You know, give him, uh, and, and maybe go fight uh, over in the UK versus one, the, the winner of that fight to uh, get experience fighting over there. You know, versus a guy who's coming to win. You know, not guys just coming to collect paychecks and lay down. Um, Antonio Orozco, 24 and 0, would be a good one. And well, Felix Diaz, who I already talked about. Um, I don't think Spence is quite re ready yet. Um, but give him a few of those guys. If he does well versus them all, wins all those fights, then yeah, now we got a whole new conversation about him and Brooke. Um, uh, in the analysis of that fight and the chances of each guy winning. Whole new conversation. But at this moment, you know, like, I don't care what, I don't care if he ices Algeria in two rounds. Uh, he I, he still gets destroyed by, um, destroyed by Brook. Um, Brook's just on another level right now, and there is levels to this shit. I know it's over you saying, but there are levels to this shit. And Brook ain't on that. Or Spence ain't on that level with Brook just yet. Not saying he can't be there, but he needs some some decent fights. Um, now. You look at the champions, Danny Garcia. All right, I think he Brook annihilates Danny Garcia. Um, Vargas, he annihilates Vargas. The Thurman Porter winner. We'll have to see how they look. Um, if Thurman looks great and wins that fight in spectacular fashion, okay, now we got a damn good fight right there. <laughs> if Porter wins it, it depends how he wins it. Does he win it, win it in an ugly, mauling fashion? Well, then you can expect a repeat of Porter Brook with maybe Brook winning the same way, less clinching, just a bit easier, honestly. Um, Brook and Pacquiao. Depending on what Pacquiao looks like versus uh, Bradley. Um... I don't know, man. Uh, that'd be a tough one to call. And we got to see what Bradley looks like, or what Pacquiao looks like, first of all, before I can give a real read on that. Um, if it's like 2014, um, Pacquiao, <coughs> I might call it a straight up 50 50 fight. Um, if he's declined a bit, clearly I'd favor Brooke. Um, Brooks big, man. Brooks big. That'd be a great fight. Great fight, but I don't think Pacquiao would want it because it's the end, end of his career. He's trying to bank as much money as possible. Um, that's why he might fight Canelo, you know, just because it's a ton of money. And no, I don't want to see Pacquiao versus Canelo. But, you know, maybe I'll make a video about that. And Tim Bradley, uh, if he wins... You know, it depends how he looks and all. But Tim Bradley is, in my opinion, uh, too too small. Um, and with with Teddy training him, you know, he's not. He would need to be all in Brooks' chest all night long, like he did with Jesse Vargas. Like really try to just outwork, out hustle, and just outland this guy while taking some severe punishment. But you know, and, and get a, you know, decision win. But I think Brooks' uh, quick feet and size and power jab, you know, power full jab, um, straight straight shots, textbook style, I think he would outbox um, Bradley on the inside. I mean, worst case scenario, he could, Bradley comes on the inside, he could clinch, get him back on the outside and start popping him with the jab and clipping him. Every time he comes in, I would favor Brook to, uh, to 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 beat Bradley unless I see something you know special with Bradley. And Bradley looks in freaking phenomenal shape uh, for this fight. And I will have my Pacquiao Bradley prediction out tomorrow, 100%. Uh, I got a couple other videos I want to do tonight, but you know that's my idea. I think basically, you know, looking over these names. I see Brooke having the best chance of becoming the the man at welterweight um, out of anybody, out of anybody. Um, 
uh, you know, flat out. I mean, I guess it's, it would be him or Thurman. Um, and, you know, when Bradley gets clipped, he don't all of a sudden just start, like, running around the ring trying to putt shot you. Uh, which makes me think to Thurman's chin. I mean, we know Thurman doesn't have a great chin. He don't even have really a... S he had a good chin, but I wouldn't say it's, you know, it's above average. But I wouldn't say it's a great chin by no means. I think he can and will be knocked out in one of his first three fights against the upper level guys. You know, like if he fought Porter, um, if he fought Brook, and let's see if he fought. Um, Pacquiao, I think one of those three would knock him out if he fought him, you know, three out of four fights, and those were three of his opponents. I think one of them would KO him. Um, he gets clipped on the chin, and he gets hesitant, and then he'll start, you know, really avoiding exchanges. Um, every once in a while, he'll pot shot, pot shot, come in, let his hands go with a one-two or something, you know, or a, a two three punch combo get the hell out of dodge start circling that ring again um which the reason so many people really turned to to thurman because he was kind of like the you know the opposite of floyd he didn't circle the ring and just win by pot shots no he came to try to take your fucking head off one time keith thurman you know ko's for life um, I got to oh, I ain't afraid to let it go, meaning I'm not going to try to avoid exchanges. I'm going to bring it to you, win or lose, who cares? I'm going to give the fans their fucking money's worth and win most of my fights. And he would have love, love from fans. But he, he seems to have became concerned about losing that O than he told us he was. Um... And I think he, he, he can get knocked out. I think he got a I think he got a weaker chin than Danny Garcia. Um Brooke, Bradley, Pacquiao, uh, out of the top guys, you know. Um I don't know, maybe even Vargas has a better chin. I I don't know, you know, but you know, I don't know. I think Brooke would Brooke would probably end up knocking him out. I do, you know, unless I see something in this Thurman uh, Porter fight that really impresses me, you know, where he can. He doesn't need to run. Um, he doesn't need to clinch. Uh, kind of just box, bang, um, stay mid range to right outside, but, you know, not circling the outside of the ring and jumping in and pot shotting. Uh, none of that, where you just circle the ring for 10 seconds straight, just running, 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 jumping, pot shot, running, running. I mean, I can't stand that shit. Um, you know, Thurman is a big guy, too. Um, he should be able to fight just like Kovalev. You know, take it to a motherfucker. Um, same with Brooke. He should be able to fight like that, too. So there should be no need for these guys to be clinching. Um, and I'm not saying Thurman clinches. Brooke. Is that the problem with the clinching in the Porter fight? I just hope the Thurman Porter fight don't turn out the same, where it's an ugly clinch fest, dirty inside fight. Um, and I hope Porter doesn't make it that kind of fight. Um, you know, but let me know what you think. Who do you think has the best chance to uh, take over the welterweight division um, out of these young guns? And do you think? Uh, Brooke himself can do it since, you know, he's, that's the last thing he said. You know, I want to unify all the belts. Uh, I want to fight all the champions. He wants Danny Garcia or Floyd or someone next. I understand that Garcia got a big following. That'd be a big money fight, but there's no way in hell Garcia is getting in the ring with Kell Brook. I would be so amazed um, if he did. And, He's, he's not going to. He's not going to. Not anytime soon, anyway. Um, look for Garcia versus Broner since uh, 
Broner said he's moving up to 47. Look for Garcia Broner. Garcia to fuck Broner up since he's going to gas early and, you know, just fuck, fuck the fight all up in camp. Get, you know, and end up probably getting um, whooped or knocked out. Uh, then Floyd steps in and fights Garcia. You know, so uh, then Floyd has the belt. And hopefully he immediately vacates it or fights Brooke or something. That'd be great, but you know, I doubt he will. Uh, we'll have to find out. But let me know what you think about, uh, you know, who do you think has the best chance of taking over the Walter Wade division. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Peace.